And we've arrived at the gateway to Cape Cod Campground in Massachusetts, and we're looking forward to exploring this incredible area. This is Miles and Smiles. It's a beautiful day, and today we're going to be exploring the Plymouth Patuxet Village, which is a recreation of the Pilgrims and the Mayflower, with everybody living as though it's that time in history. It's a great place where I came many years ago when I was in school, and I'm hoping it's going to be as good today as it was back then. This is the winter quarters for the native peoples. Look at the bark covering for the building. And how long has this canoe been in the process of being made? So for us, we've been working on it uh, since the end of 2019. So a, a bit longer than the one to two weeks it would take for <laughs> <laughs> the Wampanoag people. For hundreds of years in England, we have ordered the land in our English way. And that means that the king and his noblemen and everyone that is countered, rather everyone that is contracted to cut down trees, have been doing this for hundreds of years. Our shields. We think we're making pretty efficient use of space in our RV, but man, this whole place is about the size of our RV, maybe a little smaller, and this was their house all year round. Got the kitchen area, the dining room, Living room chair, bed, storage, wood storage, and uh, even a bassinet for the baby. And look at the chair hanging from a nail to, uh, I guess, maybe they hung their chairs when they didn't need them. Save some space up there. Yep. What you making, Kathy? I think I'm making cornbread. Starting with kernels of corn. Blasting them to smithereens. Gonna add some lard, maybe. And mm -mm, good. Mm. <laughs> now you see here, there, outside of these palisades, there's dangerous things like lions, the French, and fairies. You see, right? You see, the fairies, they're, they're, it's wild out there. They're living on the trees and whisper sweet nothings in your ear, you see, right? Do you know what this is called? It's the moo flower. Legend has it that the first passenger off the Mayflower stepped ashore on what is now called Plymouth Rock. And we've been told that that's probably just a legend, but still, here it is. Obviously, this isn't the original Mayflower, but it is a exact reproduction as far as the uh, archeologists and historians could do so. The big thing about the ship in the 17th century is that you don't have a steering wheel and your captain is not going to be steering and he's also not going to be steering from up on the highest deck like you see in the movies. That will come about almost a hundred years later than when the Mayflower was sailing in 1620. So until then, what you have is tiller steering. So what this big wooden lever is called is the whip staff. Um, when it's not tied down on the lower deck, it can move freely left or right, and what it's moving on the ship is the rudder. So most of us know, you know, there's a piece at the end of the ship, like a fin, that gets shifted left or right to turn the ship. So this is basically moving that, it's just being done from here. Well, we started at Plymouth Plantation and ended up today here at the Mayflower. I would say that the Plymouth Plantation portion of the museum was kind of a letdown to me. I had great memories of it from when I was in my 20s, but it, 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 it seemed like it was kind of hit or miss whether you'd find a good interpreter to help you understand the context of what you were seeing. And uh, how about the Mayflower? This is much more informative, uh, fascinating. The uh, tour guides who stood at various areas were very knowledgeable 
and uh, I'm sure they've answered questions many times a day, but very patient and very thorough in their explanations. So, um, I don't know, I was thinking maybe if you come to Plymouth, go to the ship first, and that will give you a good context of the experience of traveling across here to what came to be known as New England, and then go to the village and see how people set themselves up to live. Um, you might even have better questions at that point. <laughs> one, of, one of the guys we saw on the ship uh, actually had sailed on this very Mayflower from Mystic to here because the ship had been in dry dock where it was being maintained and, and restored and taken care of. And they make sure that it's actually a very functioning sailing vessel, although most of its time spent here in port. It was very cool. Although they didn't use the same techniques, they do have it equipped with modern GPS to make sure they get exactly where they want to go. We've arrived at the Cape Cod Canal and we're going to be riding uh, the bike trail along there. And as you can see, Kathy is modeling our bikes, which are stored in bins in the back of our car. So one of the first things we're going to need to do is uh, take the bikes out and unfold them and set them up so we can go biking with our friends, Adam and Helena. Behind me, is a railroad bridge, uh, which we are told is pretty cool because instead of opening like a clam, it goes up and down to let the railroad go across. Neat. When the Cape Cod Canal opened in 1914, it was actually a private waterway. Uh, they charged tolls to let ships go through the Cape instead of going all the way around the Cape. Uh, eventually, around 1914, the U.S. government bought the canals, and it's still a very busy waterway that people use uh, to uh, avoid having to go all the way out to the end of the Cape and into the ocean to continue their journey north or south along the coast. I don't think that there could be a better time of year to do this than right now in, in uh, mid-September. Uh, it's not too hot, there's not too many people, and uh, everything's just great. It's another beautiful day, and today we are gonna visit the New Bedford Whaling Museum. Above me is Kobo the Whale. Kobo, standing for King of Blue Ocean, is a blue whale and one of the largest whale skeletons in any museum in the United States. That's the mouth of a North Atlantic right whale. You don't want to go in there. And this is the life-sized heart of an adult blue whale. In addition to having been one of the great whaling ports, New Bedford is still a wealthy fishing uh, location, a great port, and among other things, they are known as one of the scallop capitals of the world. Uh, the scallop boats are the ones behind me that have the vertical arms, and uh, having heard that this is the scallop capital of the world, well, we're gonna have to go looking for some scallops to enjoy together. We're at the Black Whale here in New Bedford, Massachusetts, where uh, because we've been told that's the thing to do and we love them, we've ordered the sea scallops with uh, bacon wrapped. We've ordered some calamari to start. And uh, man, we've got a beautiful view. Yes, beautiful view of the harbor. We can't eat all of this. I know, right? <laughs> I know, it's like, well, that could be just a meal in itself. I know. Today we're riding the Shining Sea bike path along Cape Cod. This is quite different from the canal path that we took the other day. Among other things, uh, although it's called Shining Sea, much of the bike path is through, uh, through woods like this. But it goes through some interesting things like cranberry bogs and marshes. The other difference, and maybe it's because today is Sunday, is that this path is much, much busier than the uh, canal path was when we took it the other day. Uh, people walking, people uh, with little kids, 
people with really fast bikes. Uh, it's very uh, heavily traveled, also goes through neighborhoods, so there's a lot of stopping and starting to uh, cross roads. But despite all that, it's really beautiful. So as you saw when we were out on the uh, by the beach, it was so windy, incredibly rough surf. And right here, uh, just a little bit inland, it seems like a nice calm day. And uh, we're about to turn around, head back down toward Falmouth and maybe stop a couple more times and maybe find a place to get some ice cream or coffee. We're riding along on the Shining Sea Trail, actually heading back to the car, mm -hmm. and uh, we saw something pretty interesting. It's a cool, a whole campground full of airstreams. Never seen anything like it. <laughs> no, and we didn't see it on our way out, but coming back it's much more visible, and uh, we had to stop. Yeah, I mean, there's just something about airstreams. I don't know that I'd want to have one, but Boy, they just capture the whole romance of, of RVing in a way that no other kind of uh, RV really can. Reminds us of the, of the mosses. Our friends uh, on Less <laughs> Junk, More Journey. Hey, if you guys are watching this, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> we me fond memories of your Airstream. Absolutely. So we just did a little research, and uh, the name of this place is Auto Camp Cape Cod, and uh, they let you rent Airstreams to spend the night. They also have luxury tents. It looks like it's kind of an all-inclusive resort and rates at least in the month of October, which is what we checked out, start at around $200 a night for one person and it goes up from there. So it's yeah. definitely a luxurious classy air, classy <laughs> Airstream experience. If, if if that's your thing, check it out. If you've been here, make a mess Put a message for us in the comments. We would like to hear from you uh, what it's like. We're busy packing up to leave the Gateway to Cape Cod campground and uh, have really enjoyed these first legs of our New England trip at Mystic, Connecticut and Cape Cod, Massachusetts. From here, we're heading up into the White Mountains. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Better yet, subscribe. It really does make a difference. And remember, life's a journey. Make every mile count.